Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Sunday, November the 7th. And the year's 2021. Let's talk trading. It's time for weekly open and gap. This video is for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. So we take a look at the weekly chart and we can see that all the gaps have filled so far. So you weekly gap traders, hopefully you had a nice gap to fill and it paid off. And so far today, we're, on, we're about five hours into the um, trading day. And it looks like um, we haven't moved that much, about 23 pips of range. And I hope that everybody's remembered to uh, do your day, daylight savings time shift unless you live in the uh, state of Arizona. You know, it's real interesting when you look at what price has done um, this year, especially these past two months. As you can see, it's cut across that um, opening range for the, for the year, that first day of the year. It cut across last month, and it's cut across this month. So right now we're putting in the opening uh, range for the day. And you can see we have the opening range for the month right here, which we're well below. Taking a quick look here for the year, we're 162 pips below the uh, yearly open and uh, 202 below the monthly open. So we're going to have to see how uh, price acts around here. We've dealt, we've pretty much made a double bottom here. So, you know, there could be room somewhere to test here, somewhere to test here. I mean, that's far, far away, but, you know, this is trading. Anything can happen. We are in the monthly inside bar that happened uh, last month. You can see we're below the uh, week inside bar from five weeks ago and we're way below the day the last daily inside bar once again ranges haven't really done anything five hours into the trading day no pairs over 100 pips of range as far as the buy zone you can see uh, we uh, gap down that gap got filled and so now we're playing the buy zone and we've already taken out the daily pivot. Looking at the rat zone, range is too low. Only 22.5 at the moment. Pivot trading plan near the pivot point is short, it says. So we'll have to see what happens. And there's the weekly pivot, 135.38. And once again, you can uh, analyze any pair like this. You can, you know, take note of certain numbers. So when price gets around there, you'll be looking for a price reaction. Miss pivots. We missed the pivot point on Friday. So far, the weekly pivots at 135.38. So let's see if we take out that weekly and maybe take out the weekly from last week too. And we've taken out the monthly pivot so far. We're in the lower daily wick zone here at the moment. So far, we haven't gotten out of that wick zone. And looking at the ranges here, which we analyzed on Friday, and our price action simple chart here. We've got the uh, sweet spots indicators with the Walmart trade in the 
set up here. We just open, we basically uh, crossing above the previous H1 high. We've got a wall mall long trigger at the 90. You can see yesterday's open or Friday's open, Friday's high, today's low. Friday's low must be somewhere around there. Now oh, here it is down here. <laughs> And looking at the higher low, lower high trade here. Um, you, let's see, normally we use either, we use the M1 or M5. And you can see how we've just basically had a steady upward movement for about eight pips here off of that lowest M1, lowest high coming off of a three ball. But now is really not the time to uh, trade this market. It's better to wait for London unless you're really good at picking direction. Now, I had somebody uh, ask me, they said they heard that, you know, about trading out of a bad trade and how do you do it? Well, I don't advise you get into a jam, but if you do, um, what you can do one way is is you use statistics um, and one of the statistics are our fib retraces so if you know if you're doing intraday trading you might be you know looking at an h1 chart here usually i'll look at i like to look at the daily or the weekly because it might take time to get out of the trade so for example, let's say for some strange reason you're short and you're down, you know, a bunch of pips. Well, if you're what you'd want to try and do is get your average entry right here. This is the 23% fib retrace level. And if you're wondering, you can use the TRO dynamic fibs SR indicator. So right there I've got it's the 24 level. I think it's supposed to be 23.2 I can't remember but I just put it at 24 so so more times than not price will at least retrace to this level you can see here price pushed down and what did it do it retraced to the level okay so when price pushed down here this was the level but we got a new dynamic uh, support resistance what you might want to do to clean that up a bit let's see put in a three there we can make the boxes oh let's leave them big easier to see um and what we want is periods 34 to match the three level zz and so this is what it looks like and so you see here, price put in this low, it came here. Got near this low, came back to here. Got near the low again, came back to that level. Pushed down to a new low, what did it do? At least gets to this level. A lot of times, some people bank on a 50% retrace, but or the 38% uh, or whatever that one is. Um, but you can see here, time and time again. So that's how I would trade my way out of a jam. Do I advise it? No, because sometimes, you know, for example, if you tried it here, you were too late. You say, oh, and then all of a sudden, you know, and you put in a bunch of lots, now it took you down. It could either wipe you out or put you in a drawdown and you'd really be uh, upset with life. So, you know, but as we usually say, you have your stop loss in, but there are times when you don't do that and this is just one way of trading yourself out of the jam. Um, the other way is, is to um, act like that trade doesn't exist and just start trading and make up whatever difference you can. Um, depending on your account, you, maybe you can hedge, maybe you can't.
if you can't then you're really stuck so let's say you're short the pound dollar or, or you're long the pound dollar but it's dropping on you um but since you can't hedge in that account what you could do is you could flip over to another one of the pound pairs like the pound new zealand pound jpy so you get on the right side of the trade um or the other thing is you can do something um for example um if you trade um gpb a jpy no that wouldn't be a good one uh let me think um what i'm thinking is i'm looking for a synthetic um pair but the thing is if you were long the pound so you're long the pound short the dollar what you might want to do and and the price is going against you well that means the dollar is going up as the pound goes down so you might want to trade a dollar pair in that direction and you can flip back and forth between a couple of different pairs a pound pair or or dollar pair um to get you out of that jam so those are all possible ways how to do it um so i hope that helps uh, the main thing is, is just don't get yourself in the jam. <laughs> Try not to. And there's one other thing kind of might tie in with that. Um, and I'll maybe talk about it later this week, too. Um, I, I read something again, and it really makes a lot of sense. And that is, if you have a simple entry method, like the buy zone, or the wick zone um or you know maybe a squiggly line the 520 or the 50 200 crossover or the close closing above or below the ema5 you know it doesn't matter whose method but if it's a simple method meaning there's maybe only one two possibly three things that have to line up for you to take the trade you just do that, and that will be any analysis, second guessing, um, guessing thing that you do on the fly, because it, it's basically a simple system, and simple systems usually work um, over and over again. Um, you know, it's like or like the Walmart method, for example. I mean, it's very simple. Do you win every trade? No, but if, if you stick to it, you know, over time, you know, with, with money management, um, you can see that you can make a profit. Because the thing about trading is the entry is only gets you into the trade. But after you're in that trade, the market's going to dictate pretty much what you do next and meaning do you exit with a profit or do you exit with the loss and there's no reason to fight the market because the market's going to win it's, it's just too big of a beast so if you find yourself in a losing trade um then hopefully just let it hit your stop loss and then you can you know dust yourself off and take your next signal because thing about trading is if you keep looking for the system that's going to fix your problem the system isn't your problem it's probably either you're uh, you're not following the system you know there might be some emotional reason behind it or your money management trade management risk management you're not doing it and that's usually why you wind up in those situations so fellow traders that being said just remember it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so this week i want you to go out there and drain the banks this is the rumpled one over and out